Okay, today I'm going to show exporting a model out of ZBrush and importing it into Maya and then UVing it in Maya. So um, at this stage, I kind of have the basic model where I want it to go. I kind of have this, I'm kind of going for this level of detail in the model. You know, so there's still some more detail to add to this thing, but the basic shape is very much in place, like the basic sculpt. You know, so when you kind of have it at that point, that's when you know it's ready to UV. So the first thing you want to do is remember that I have this model in subtools. And you can kind of see me model this up to this point in the past tutorial here. So I kind of built it up with clay tubes. Then I deleted the higher geometry versions and then kind of sculpt it again with a smoother brush to get it to this point. So I use the clay tubes to kind of sketch in the form and went through that process. So you can kind of see that, how I kind of got to this point in that last tutorial. So, and recall that there's some subtools in here. So I have the main head right there. I have my eyes and then I have some eyelashes that I modeled right there. And I have some hair that I sketched in, but I'm not crazy about it, so I'm just going to kind of move on without it here on this demo. Um, but you can kind of see the hair there. <laughs> um, so when I, I'm, the process for this is I'm going to select the model that I want to export. In this case, it'll be the head. And then, it, um, and that's in the subtool menu on the right. And then above that in the tool menu, export is the button you want to do and then we're going to export it as obj's but before doing that just make sure that you select the model go down to the geometry tab right here and so remember i have the head selected and so i have it on the four subdivision level right now and so if i exported it right now it would export at that subdivision level which as you can see when we zoom in is just way more than we need in in maya here so I'm actually, I'm going to bring this down to subdivision level two. So this is still a lot of topology here, um, but I think this will just kind of work a little bit better for Maya. So in my case, I'm going to do subdivision level two. I could also have done one. This is pretty good, especially if you have like an animated characters or a character that you plan to animate in the future. This subdivision level is really nice. And this would honestly probably be totally fine, but um, I just know that my model is going to be for still frame render, renders only. And so I'm kind of okay with the subdivision level. So anyway, that's the geometry tab, this little slider right there. And I press shift and F to get this wireframe on it. You can also go to transform and then look for this poly F button. Um, that poly F button gives you the wireframe. And my computer doesn't show it right here, but sometimes on your computers, it might show up on this little tab right here. So you might also be able to find it there. So. That's just a good way to kind of preview what topology you're about to export. So I'll go up to tool and then export. And I'm going to save this on, I have a head, I have a project folder here. And I'm going to save it under my scenes folder. I'm going to make a new folder within it called to Maya 2. So again, that's just in my scenes folder and my project folder. I'll just kind of name this and OBJ format is the standard format for it. And um, that is a good format to use. So I didn't change the file type or anything like that. And OBJ is what you want. And that should be the default in there. So I'm also going to export the eyes. So you can tell I was able to select the head or export the head only because I have it selected in my subtools there. So I'm going to go up to the eyes and then so select that in the subtool menu and then go under geometry and I'm just going to check the subdivision level on my eyes here and just see how that might look if I were to export that and that looks pretty good I think that's that'll probably work what I have it as and so right now I think my eyes are at subdivision level two which for my model looks like that so with the eyes selected in the subtool menu, I'll go up to the top under tool and then export it. I'm going to export in that same folder. And you can see here the format. It gives you some options right here, but OBJ, the default right there, is good. 
So those are both exported. And so I'm just gonna minimize ZBrush now and open up Maya. And so with Maya, I'll go to File, Import, to import these into there. And so I have my demo head. I'm gonna import the OBJ. You can see that open up there. And then I'll do the same for the eyes, file import, and then the eyes, the OBJ, import that. So now the model's in there. You can kind of see it comes in as a weird material here and it looks pretty faceted there. You can see on all the, the wireframe right there that each, oh, I'm using the shortcuts from ZBrush here to move around. Okay, I need to remember this is Maya now. Um, the wireframe looks faceted in there. So I'll select the model. And then if you go up to mesh display, and then you're looking for soften edge. So at the very top, mesh display, and then soften edge. And you see that gets rid of the faceting for you. I'll do the same for the eyes. So mesh display, um, soften edge. And so before we get into UVing, I just want to give this a different material. The material that ZBrush kind of exports as OBJs as kind of weirds me out a little bit. So I'm just going to go to the Hypershade, which is, again, this button right here, the egg button at the top. And I'm just going to make a new Arnold shader. Let's see if Maya will cooperate with me at all today. There we go. Um, AI standard surface is what I want, and I will rename it. So I'll just, at the top, to rename it, I'll just select it up here, then right click, and I'll hold right click and go down to rename, and I'll just call it face. It's not really, you don't need to do the shader thing. It's just, um, it helps me because it was distract, it distracts me. So my hypershade didn't have the properties editor. So I just wanted to kind of bring that back into place. So to apply that material, I'll select the models and then under that new material, I'll right click, hold right click and go assign material to selection. You can see the color change there. So now the model's softened and it's more of like a standard material here. So the next thing I'm gonna show is UVing the model. And I'm actually going to hide the eyes for a minute and just only worry about my model. And so one thing you'll notice in this model, I kind of um, messed up a little bit. You can see that in, inside the eyes, I kind of had this model of the sockets in there, as well as the nose and the mouth. Um, and that's not on this model. And if that's the case for your model, it's, it's definitely not the end of the world or anything like that, but it is just more ideal to have that watertight there. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, and so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to UV this. So the UVing process for modeling this head is exactly the same as UVing, the UVing tutorial that I did earlier this semester here that you can find on the D2L. Um, so no new techniques are going to be shown here. It's just I'm going to show you the way I go about doing it for a head. So under workspace, instead of Maya Classic or modeling, which you might have it right now, go to UV editing. So workspace, UV editing in the top right. That'll bring up, yeah, it should bring up the model to look like this here. So we have this view right here on the left. And it's right now it's the orthographic front view and I would rather it be the perspective view. So I'm gonna to go to panels, perspective, perspective right there. So I'll just leave that up for a sec. Panels, perspective, perspective to just change that into the perspective view. And then here we have the UV editor and then to the far right, we have the UV toolkit. Um, you can see that the UVs are a complete mess right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click Hold right click and go to UV under the UV editor right there. And I'm just going to select all the UVs and delete them. Just get them out of the way. They're, they're, they came in as a mess. Don't need to worry about that. So 
Let's start UVing this thing. So the way that I UV ahead is it's really important to have the seams of, you know, when you cut it, cut open a UV, it's kind of like you're shrink wrapping the, the model in paper or something like that. And then you're applying the texture of that paper and then wrapping it back around again. And you're going to have seams. And generally speaking, the seams, I just try to keep it away from the face, which, and I'll show you how to do that in this tutorial here. So I'm going to right click and go to face. Actually, I'm going to right click and go to object mode. Sorry, I'm going to select the whole object here. And then I'm going to do a planar projection from the front view here to start things off. And so you can see that my model is facing towards the Z axis. So we're going to want to do a planar projection, in this case, from the Z axis. And you can kind of check this little icon down here to see if that's going to be the case for you. Most likely it is. So under the UV toolkit, and remember I've just selected an object mode, I go to create and then planar, but I'm going to hold shift before I hit planar because I want to get the options box for it. So UV toolkit, create, oops, hold down shift and click planar. And it's already set correctly here. So I want it to be on project from the Z axis. And then make sure that this right here is checked on. So keep image width height ratio is checked on. Um, if that's off, uh, Maya will automatically fit the UVs. It'll squish them to fit into this zero to one, zero to one box. But we, we want it to come out proportional. We don't, we'll, we'll squish it ourselves later. So um, have it look like this and press apply. And so there you can see it kind of just like blasted a projection from the front view. And remember when you do a projection, I'll press Q to make sure that it's done, that it looks good for the most part in the front of the face, but then when you get off to the sides, it stretches out, right? Because we projected it from the front. And then by the time you get to the back side, it's probably gonna be flipped reversed here. So let's start. So that's gonna be our main UV projection. And so let's get started on this thing. So the first scene that I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut it just in front of the ears a little bit. So I'm gonna right click and go to edge. And I don't want to see this. It's kind of hard to see the edges that I'm selecting with the checkerboard on. So I'm going to turn the checkerboard off by clicking this button right here. That kind of turns on and off the visibility of the checkerboard on the model. And so you don't have to do this edge loop exactly where I'm doing it. But I'm going to have to think about this a little bit. So I'm going to, do, I'm going to start it there. We're eventually going to connect the ears to the side of this thing too. So I'm going to start the edge loop there and you can see that for my model, it kind of goes around the top of the head, but the edge loop stops at either ear. So here I'm going to kind of um, continue the seam across the ear. And then here I'm going to shift and double click to continue the edge down there. And then I think I'm going to run the edge loop below his, where his chin meets his neck there, or her neck. And so if you can see there, I created an edge loop that just kind of goes around the face, covers the jaw, is it right in front of the ears, basically just find where the edge loop goes right in front of your ears and do the edge loop there. And so I have the edge loop selected and it should be going all the way around the model. So under the UV toolkit to the right, I'll go under cut and sew and then I'll press cut. And if that cut around correctly, it should give you, um, if you right click and go to UV shell in the UV toolkit or the UV view, it should make it so that you can select the back of the head or the front of the head. So I'll just select it. And remember I'm on UV shell and I'll press W or go over here and press the move tool. And I will just move the head out of the way a little bit. And I'll select the back of the head. Or actually I'll just wait until I select the back of the head. Or never mind, sorry, I'm going all over the place. But I am gonna select the back of the head and just move it off to the side. 
So now you can see here that I have a cut that covers the whole back of the head and then I have a cut that does the whole front of the head. So something I'm gonna to continue to do here, I'm gonna continue working on the front of the head here. This is basically the cut we want for it. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna right click and go to edge mode. And I'm gonna to try to find the center edge and I'm not going to select a whole edge loop here, but I'm just going to give this a little bit of a cut. Um, so the reason I'm doing this cut right now, or I'm selecting these edges right now, is that if I unfolded this um, head, just think of it as paper. If you're trying to unfold this whole front of the head as paper, it wouldn't go flat all the way. So I need to give it a little bit of a cut down the chin and over here on the top of the forehead just to make sure that this can get as flat as possible here. So I'm just giving it a little bit of a cut there and then I'm going to the top of the head. I'm going to give it a little bit of a cut up here. Having a little trouble making these selections today. So since I was having trouble making this selections, one thing that's really important for me to do is to press four and just look around, check the wireframe view for areas where I made selections that I didn't want. So I'm holding down control and dragging to deselect areas that I don't want. This is the problem with working with a higher resolution mesh is this just working with the mesh is a lot more difficult. There's some that are really hiding from me in here. I'm also working on a laptop right now, so it's a little hard to see, but I just wanted this edge loop selected right there. Or that ed those edges selected there. And then these edges selected here, just down the center of the model. I think I got them. So here, I'm just going to press cut, under cut and sew again. So I'm just making a little cut there. So what, what I'm doing here is when this unfolds, it'll just be able to get a little more flat here. And... If I had the inside of the eye socket made on these models, I would definitely want to do a cut around the eyes and inside the nose and inside the mouth for these sections. And I'm actually still going to do that here. Um, so I'll right click and do edge. And I'll press F once I select the edge that I want. So I'm trying to find the edge where the inside of the eye socket starts. And so once I find it, I'll shift and double click to get the whole edge loop. And so I'm gonna have these inside faces here be their own UV shell. And then these outside faces be part of the face here. So I'll write, um, so I have that edge loop selected and then I'll press cut. And hopefully if it worked, when I look at it in the UV view, if I right click and go to UV shell, I should be able to select that inside eye socket. So I'm going to do that for both eyes. And you can see here something that's really nice is on my perspective view model. Oops, the cuts. Oh my gosh, come on, Maya. Um, the cuts, when I make them, it creates a bold white line where the cut has been made, kind of showing me that a cut's been made there. And so if you want that on or off, it's this button right here. So that I deselected it, so it turns it off. And then I clicked it on right there. And so that makes it so I can see where I've already made cuts here. I can see something a little funky happening there and there. That kind of happened with the model when it came in, so I'm gonna to have to keep an eye on that. But I'm gonna do the same thing for this eye. So I just shift, double click, 
to get that whole edge loop selected. And once I have the edge loop selected the way I want it to, I will, again, under the UV toolkit, under cut and sew, I'll press cut, and then right click, UV shell. And I'm not sure if that one went through. Let's see here. I don't think that made a cut. So um, when that happens, usually that means that the whole edge loop didn't get selected. So I'm just going to go around and look. Sure, it looks like it got selected. Let's try. UV shell again. Okay, so it did work. It's just having trouble selecting it here. So in the UV editor view, right click UV shell, select the area you want to move off, which is the eye. And sometimes it'll just be really hard to make the selection. So just kind of keep that in mind. Okay, so I have both the inside eyes right there. And I'm going to do the same for inside the nose and inside the mouth. Um, inside the nose really might not need it um, but it would be if you have the nose filled in which you should do I just um, I think I just I have so many different versions of this model from doing demos of it that I kind of lost track of which one I brought into ZBrush here um, but you do the same thing where you select an edge loop right there cut Select an edge loop right there, cut, and then do the cut and sew, and kind of bring them out over to this side right there. Let's check the inside of the mouth. Oops, come on. Okay, yeah, so my model is just really not filling on any of these. Um, okay. I mean, one thing I can do too is I could hypothetically just model it now to fill it in to kind of get that section. But I think at this point I'm okay with this model being that way. But for, for your models, if you have the the um, the mouth filled in. Um, I would just right click, do an edge loop, select an edge loop right here on the inner mouth. Then under cut and sew, press cut, and then right click and do UV shell. Grab the shell of the inner mouth, and then just drag it off to the side exactly the same as I did to the inner eyes there. And so at that point, you'll have the whole face area kind of mapped out for you. And so I'm gonna cut the rest of this model into a few more different pieces. So the ears kind of need to have their own um, area. I'm gonna do the front of the neck from this point. Maybe have the bottom and then the back of the head. The, he the whole idea here is my model is gonna be mainly, mainly rendered from the front, kind of from these angles right here. And so I really want that face to all be kind of one UV shell, which is happening here, which is great. So I'm going to go ahead and save my scene in case anything crashes here. Um, uh, so I'm going to right click and go to edge and then cut and sew a few more edge loops here. See my mesh gets a little messy um, back there behind the ear on this one. So I'm just selecting this edge. It's going around the back of the ear. 
works like I'm having to do this one at a time. If you select an edge you don't like, just do control. But otherwise I'm doing shift and clicking. And I'm not doing a shift and double click because the edge loop, I don't want it to go all, all, all the way around the model. You really don't want extra edges selected you, um, beyond the ones that you want to cut here. If you have any stray edges, it'll just kind of make it get a little ugly when it comes time to um, cut this model out. If it gets too hard to select the edges, something I'll do sometimes is I'll switch my view to inside of the head. So I'm looking at inside the, the head this way. Ooh, this ear is tricky. Okay, so. control to deselect some of that. So hopefully I got a full edge loop here going around the ear. And I just want to check the rest of my model to make sure that I didn't select any edges on, you know, the other side of the model here. Looks okay. I'll press forward just to double check again. Okay. And then here, I'll, under UV Toolkit, under Cut and Sew, I'll press Cut. And if that went successfully, I should be able to right-click, do the UV Shell, and select that ear, and pull it off. The rest of the model there. And I'm going to do the same thing for her um, right ear. So I started the bottom edge. Down here, the F button is quite helpful here to kind of frame in the camera on the edges that you have selected. So if you see my camera jump, that's usually because I'm pressed F to kind of recenter my model a little bit. Again, unfortunately with this ear, I'm having to select it one edge at a time here. Depending on what kind of animal or creature you have, you might not need to do one by one. You might be able to do an edge loop, but just remember that if a cut goes you know, into the face or something, when you unfold the face, um, it's gonna create an extra cut as if you did an exacto knife right there, you know, and it's gonna just make it a little sloppier when you unfold it, and you'll probably have to fix it down the road. So it is important to kind of select the correct edges here. Maya's really picky about where your cursor is. And I'm, the ear is so tricky here that I go inside of the model here. Ooh, and I selected a bunch of edges that fell into the model's face here. You can tell if you press F and your camera go, zooms out to the wrong spot that some stray edges definitely got selected in there, which is problematic. It makes life a lot harder here. So I'm just going to keep pressing Shift. Hold control and deselect those edges. So you see here when I press F, the camera zooms way out, which definitely means you can see here that this little edge on the other side of the face got selected somehow. And so when you press F and it, and it, it jumps in, 
on the area that you've been trying to cut, that's a good sign that um, you know edges on the other side of the head didn't get selected by mistake. So the F button really is a helpful tool here and just helping make sure that you have clean cuts here. So I think with less dense meshes, it's a lot easier to tell too when you go to wireframe moon. But I think that's good. So I'm gonna have the edge loop selected under the UV toolkit under cut and sew. I'll press cut again, right click, UV shell. Just drag off that other ear here. And so we're getting close to having all the cuts we need. That was definitely the hardest cut right there. So I'm also, I'm gonna give the front of the neck and the bottom of the neck down here their own cuts as well. So, but these will be a little easier to do. So for the bottom of the neck, that'll be the next area that I do. So this should be a pretty easy edge loop, at least on my model here. So I'm just gonna shift, double click, and you can see it pretty quickly selected that edge loop going around the bottom of the, the neck there. And I think that'll be a good edge loop. So I'll under cut and sew, I'll press cut. You can see it made a white line down there at the bottom of the neck. I'll do right click, UV shell, select it, and then press W, and then just drag it out of the way. And then here, I'm going to right click and go to edge mode again. So I'm going to do another cut. This time I'm going to do the front of the neck. Give it its own section here. Again, I'm having to click it one at a time because if I do the edge loop, it'll kind of seep into the bottom of the model here. You want to make sure the edge goes all the way up to that edge right there and connects up with it. But you just don't want it to go one further or anything like that. I mean, it's not the end of the world or anything. It's just when that happens, it makes it when it unfolds, it unfolds a little weird. And so here, I'm just gonna look around my model and make sure you can see here that I selected an edge back there by mistake. Press four to help me look for any stray edges that I might have pressed. F button is also helpful here just to focus the camera in. And kind of tells you a little bit if you made any strays there. Okay, so I have the, I'm, I'm gonna make a cut for this front of the neck right here. So under UV Toolkit, Cut and Sew, I'll press Cut again. And you can see it got bold white lines right there. And then when I right click and do UV Shell, I should be able to get the front of the neck on its own shell there. So looking at the, in the UV view, I kind of have it set into these cuts. And then I just need one more cut. I need to have the, um, the, the ears divided from the front of the ear and then one cut for the back of the ear. So I should be able to just do right click, or sorry, shift and double click an edge loop here. So I might do, I'm gonna try this edge loop. Mm, let's see here. So that didn't quite work. <laughs> Shoot, um, on my ear. So I might unfortunately have to do another Okay, that one's better. So if you see here, I initially tried this edge loop right here, but when I double clicked it, it kind of it loops back around inside the ear, which I just I really don't want. I just want this to just give me, I want the front of the ear, then the back of the ear. And so if it doesn't give you like a great edge loop the first time, maybe just try shift and double clicking another edge loop and see if you have better luck, because that, that happened to me this time. So I shift and double click this edge loop and you can see here that it goes all the way around the ear, divides it up nicely from the front and the back, and then connects back up here to the front. So that's good. So um, I have that edge selected, UV toolkit, cut and sew, I'll press cut, and then right click UV shell. Should be able to separate the front of the ear from the back of the ear there. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. So here, I'm just gonna make sure I'm in edge mode, which I think I already am. And I'm looking, I think it's this edge loop right here. 
So shift and double click to select that edge loop. I'll press F to frame the camera on it. And you can see here it divides the front of the ear from the back of the ear pretty nicely here. And so UV toolkit, cut and sew, I'll press cut again. Then right click UV shell, separate out the ears again. So now I definitely have all the shells that I think I'm gonna need. For many of your models here, there should probably be another shell for inside the nostrils and then inside the mouth coming up in there. Um, so here I'm just gonna save just to make sure if this crashes, I don't lose my work. And I'm gonna close up the cut and sew section and I'm gonna start trying to unfold this. So I'm gonna start with the front of the face because that's the most important section here. So I'm just gonna kind of UV shell, move it a little out of the way just to make sure it doesn't overlap with other stuff. And I'm gonna go under the unfold, unfold tab, which is underneath cut and sew. And I'm gonna select all, right click and go to UVs. I'm gonna select all the UVs in the front of the face right there. It's easy to make the selection too because I've moved it away from all the other UV shells. So just drag and select like that to get them all. And then it's either going to be optimize or unfold that works the best here. So I'm going to try unfold, see what happens here. Might need a second. Okay. So here you can see it flattens out the face. And the best way to test it is remember this checkerboard button right there. Let's me see how well it unfolded. And remember we want these to be basically squares. That did okay. It didn't do amazing, but it definitely did well. So you can see we want this checkerboard and the front of the face. It's okay if they overlap each other like that and become diagonal. Diagonal is fine, but what you want is you want to make sure it stays as squares right there. So one thing I might do is so I'm going to just take note of this and I'm going to undo it. Bring it back. I'm going to right click and do edge. I'm going to bring out this cut a little further towards the chin. And then under cut and sew, I'm going to cut that. So this will make it so that it just has a little more leeway to unfold correctly. And most of the, this is, you know, the, under the chin's not going to get rendered that much. And over here, there's going to be hair on top of this typically. So it's kind of okay to have a seam there. I feel like, okay, just want to check to make sure I didn't select any edges by mistake, which I did, unfortunately, over there. Okay, so I'm going to go press cut. Let me just do that again just to make sure it went through. Okay, so now that cut got extended up the chin a little bit and then got extended up here on the top of the head a little bit more. So now when I go over to this view under the UV view and select UVs, select all the UVs in the face. I'm going to try to unfold it again. And hopefully this will come out a little bit better. So I tried to unfold last time. I'm going to try it again this time. Just give it a second to think about it. You might need to right click and go to object mode so that you can see the result a little bit better. So that improved it a little bit. It's, it's good, but it's not perfect. So let me try. I mean, it's definitely usable. It's just, um, let's try optimize instead of unfold this time. Right click, object mode. Okay, that's a bit better. Stretching a little bit up here. You know, the main goal here is you just want this to be squares. So one thing you can do as well, and you see how you can see it when it's unfolded here, when I, by creating that cut along the lower chin and then the upper forehead, it just makes it so that when I make this cut, it just gives this paper some room to unfold. And ooh, you can see here in the nose, I have some overlapping uh, UVs here. 
So I actually am going to need to right click. So I'm going to undo this optimization here and I need to make two more cuts for the inner nose here. So let me just do that real quick. So I'm looking for a good edge loop inside the nose. So I'm going to go to edge mode, double click right there. And I'm just going to do them both at the same time here. Okay, so selected both of those edge loops. You can see them in here. And I'm going to, and you see I undid my unfolding there because I think the unfolding will go better this time once I kind of have that cut for inside the nose. So I'll cut. I did two at the same time there. I'll right click and do UV shell. And I'm gonna try to select each nostril, inside, in, inner nostril. Press W, drag it out of the way. So I just pulled both inner nostrils out of the way. So now I'm going to try this again. So I'm going to select all the UVs in the face right there. And then I'm going to try optimize again this time. And then check the checkerboard button. And remember, optimize is under the unfold menu under UV toolkit. And yeah, that looks good. So this is, um, it's getting a little stretched under the chin, a little stretched up here. Let's try, let's just try, try unfold. The UVs look really good in the face and then I'm just getting a little bit of stretching towards the top sometimes. And it is good to just be picky with this. Okay, so now it, uh, mm, a little bit under the chin. So one thing I can do is I can right click and go to UVs and then select a group of UVs and then try unfolding them again just to kind of flatten them out a little bit more. Sorry, I, I, um, I just kind of want to find the perfect thing here for this model. So you, you're going to have some, it, some, most of the time this will come out perfectly the first time, but sometimes it just won't come out quite perfectly. And you'll just kind of want to choose the, the best option here. So I think Optimize is coming out just a little bit better here in the important areas. And then it gets a little more distorted than the, than the other one under the chin, but I'm kind of more willing to have under the chin be messed up. Or not messed up, but just a little less accurate here. And so I selected all the EVs. I did um, that option. And then here, I can see here, sometimes you can fix the sections. If you select a few of the EVs in a problem area, then you press optimize. You can just kind of fold these out a little bit. In this case, it's not really doing that much. So, um, I'm go back to object mode. But all in all, I'm I'm being really picky here. This this is great. <laughs> I don't know why I'm being so finicky about this. So, um, that's the front of the face. UV'd right there. Once we texture this, this will look a little weird and you know serial killery. Um, with yeah, but it's get used to it um, over time. So here I'm going to do the same with the front of the neck here. So I'm just going to move this to give it its own section. And since this was projected initially from the front view, this should unfold pretty naturally here. So I'm just going to select the whole thing. And then I'm going to try it in faces this time. And I'm going to press optimize. 
Looks like Optimize did a good job there. I'm just going to check Unfold and see what happens there. I think between the two, I think Unfold came out just like microscopically better there. So um, I have the front of the neck and the front of the face done here. So I'll kind of keep moving here. So we have the bottom of the head here. So I'm just going to move that shell over and give it its own space. And I'm going to do a planar projection from the bottom view here. So I'm going to do a new projection to unfold this one. So I'm just going to move my camera so that it's looking at it from the bottom view here and just kind of aim it at it as best as I can right here. And then I'm going to, under the UV toolkit, under Create, and under Planar, I'll Shift and click Planar. And I'm going to do a projection from the camera view. So the perspective view right here. And press Apply. So that'll give me some pretty good UVs to work with there. Because remember, this thing was initially projected from the front view. So the UVs at the bottom of the neck aren't, you know, with our main projection, aren't going to be like magnificent or anything like that. So I created a projection from that view for those faces at the bottom of the neck. And they already look good. But I am going to and face right click faces. You can do this faces, UVs, UV shell. Um, you can unfold from that. So I'm going to unfold that. That looks good. And I'm just going to drag this out of the way. So my finished models, I'm just dragging it off to the left. So I'm going to do the back of the head here. And the back of the head, if you recall, we projected initially from the front view. So our, our main projection, other than these faces at the bottom of the neck that we just did there are, were projected from this perspective, right from the front. So the back of the head, I bet is gonna be reversed. And so the way you check to see if your UVs need to be flipped or anything like that is this button right here. So normally this gray mode just kind of just shows you the UVs in a, in a grayed out mode here. And then this button right here turns it to blue and red. Uh, blue is good, red means it's reversed. And so this projection is kind of, I mean, it's good. It's just, it gets stretched out up here, but that'll get helped out in the unfolding process. And it's red, so it got flipped around. So I'm gonna select the UV shell, select that whole thing right there. And then to flip them, you'll go under the UV toolkit under transform, and then scroll down. And it should be, yeah, it's right above texel density which is something we'll get to in a minute, but there's this flip button right here. So this is under the UV toolkit under transform, scroll down towards the bottom, and then this flip button, I'll just click it, and then it flips it and it becomes a blue. So that's great. UV shell this time. And I'll do, I'll try the unfold under, so UV toolkit under unfold, I'll press unfold. And that did a pretty good job. So I got those UVs in the back of the head done. So I'll do UV shell, right click, do UV shell, and then press W and I'll just drag it off to the area where I have my finished UVs done there. So now this thing's really starting to come together here. I got to do the ears and the inside of the nose and the inside of the eyes coming up. Just want to check some. Okay, so let's start with the inside of the nose here. So I'll do this one. For this, I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna keep, for these smaller areas, I'm just gonna keep doing projections from my camera view to kind of get them. So I'm gonna, um, I'm looking at their right nostril or the left from our view. And I'm gonna select those faces right there. And again, I'm selecting the faces just by right clicking and going to face and just making the selection up here in the UV view. It's much easier to make the selection up, up in the UV view rather than in the perspective view. And I'm gonna do some new projections from the camera view. So I'm gonna shift and click planar right there under the create tab under the UV toolkit. And then I'm gonna do the camera option. Apply looks good there. I'm gonna do the same for this nostril. If I can find it. So I selected the faces inside the nostril. Press apply again. 
So now I have some new UV shells to work with for the inside nostrils. So for this first one, I'll do UV shell, select it, and then go down. I'm gonna close some of these tabs. So under the UV toolkit, under the unfold tab, I'm just gonna click unfold. See, it kind of unfolds it pretty nicely there. Um, so that's the unfold it did. Nice and square in there, which is great. I'm gonna do the same thing here. So UV shell, select that one. And then press unfold again. And it's all blue, which is good. Remember I have this button right here pressed. So that shows me blue is good, red is bad. And both of those nostrils are done. So I'm just gonna move each one off to the side here. And I'm gonna worry about scaling these later. So now it's basically going to be that process again and again here. For the inside of the eyes, I'm going to move on to that section. So I'll right click and do UV shell, press F. Okay, so I'm going to do what's um, their right eye. And remember, this is only inside of the eye here. You can kind of see it in there. And so I'm just gonna keep doing, I like that planar projection from the camera view. It's just a, a nice quick way to work and you end up with good UVs anyway. So it's kind of a win-win for a lot of these areas. So um, if you have this eye filled in, you might wanna do um, uh, experiment with a spherical projection, potentially. Um, so yeah, there's a few different ways. Or you could do a planar projection and then cut it in half for that inner socket. That's another way to operate that. So here, I'm just gonna select those faces and then um, I'm gonna do, um, under Create, I'll hold Shift and do Planar. I'm gonna do another camera projection for that inner eye. And I'll just press Q and I'm gonna go ahead and before I reposition, I'm just gonna go ahead and knock out these ones on their left eye. So I'll right click, go to Face select those faces right here in the UV view. You can see I make the selection over there. And then I'll do another planar projection from the camera view. And remember I get that menu by holding shift and clicking planar. So now both the inner eyes should be pretty good. I might need to unfold them here. So I'll do UV shell. Yeah, it's a little stretched out. So I'll do um, right click and I'm doing the UV shell. And I'm gonna select this eye first. You can see it's select there and I'm gonna press unfold. And that did a pretty good job. Let me just try optimize. So optimize came out better that time. So I have that UV shell. I'm just gonna drag it off to the side. I'm gonna select this UV shell now, press F so it focuses on here. And I remember optimize works better then unfold this time. So under the UV toolkit, under unfold, I'll press optimize. That helps get that one flattened out. And so now we've done everything except for the ears. So here, it's really a lot easier to make the selection, selection of the ears over here under the UV editor than it is in the perspective view. So right click and go to face. I'll select those faces and um, I am gonna switch my view back to the gray mode because it's just a little hard for me to tell what's going on. So right click and go to face. Okay, so I selected this ear, that's gonna be their left ear. I'm gonna do another planar projection from the camera position here. And that's even better, honestly, than a orthographic projection because an orthographic proje projection will come out there. And actually, I would rather the angle be a little bit off axis like this to kind of match up with it. So I'm gonna just um, do a planar projection from the camera view. So shift, project, um, planar, check this, and then press apply. And I have that. I'll select UV shell. And let's see here, select UV shell. I'll press the checkerboard box. So you can see just from the, it gets a little wonky up at the top, but in the center, this is a really good projection just to start with here. 
but I might just go um, unfold and try optimize. And that works pretty well. Let's, let's see unfold. Okay, unfolds a little better this time. It's sometimes a little random which one works better. But so I unfolded that. So that outer left ear looks good. I'm gonna do the outer, the other outer ear here. So I'm gonna just gonna navigate my camera to face towards it as best as I can. Notice that, so the seam is happening right here. So I'm just kind of moving my camera and angling it so that if it's projecting UVs, it would come out as flat as humanly possible here. So shift planar. I'm gonna do another camera projection, press apply. I'll press Q, then UV shell to select it here. Again, the UVs already look pretty good. It gets stretched out towards the edges. So I can't remember which one works best. I think it was unfold. Yep, so unfold looks good there. And then UV shell, drag it off to the side. So we really are almost done here. So this is just the inside of the ears now. So I'm gonna do this ear first. And I'm actually, I'm gonna do another planar projection from the camera view, so same thing. Just gonna navigate my camera to the other side of it here. Shift planar, and this all looks good. I'll press apply and then close it. And I'm gonna just go ahead and do the same thing to this other ear. So I'm just, again, whenever I do this camera projection, I'm just making sure it's really important. It's like a quick and easy way to work, but it also is important that you just aim the camera really nicely here to get it set in the right direction. So shift and planar, apply, and then close. Just gives me like a decent starting place here. And then here, I'll right click and go to UV shell, select this one. And I'm gonna try unfold first. That looks good, let me just see optimize. Okay, this time optimize looks slightly better. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Select the, that UV shell and then try optimize. Now it looks good. So now I've projected all the UVs and they're all laid out flat and you can kind of tell that and they all look blue here. So if I click this blue button, just double check to make sure none of these show up as red. They should all appear as basically squares here. And at this point, the next thing we want to do is we need these all to fit in this, this zero to one to zero to one, zero to one box right here. So let's start by moving this back ear out of the way. Let's take a look at these. So the main thing we want to have you beat is this face. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the face UV shell. So right click UV shell and then I moved it into position here. And UV shell lets you just move a whole shell of UVs all at once. And I'm going to scale it. I'm trying to imagine I want everything else to be to scale to it, but also be able to fit into this zero to one grid. So I think just by eyeing it, I feel like that might work. And so here, I'm gonna select that UV shell, and then I'm gonna go under Transform. And at the very bottom of Transform, there's this Texel Density, and which is, um, if you recall from the earlier les lesson, Texel Density is the density of the UVs. Um, so you can see, like the back of the ears are massive, and the face is smaller, so the Texel Density is gonna be tighter in the face right now. And so I'll press Get, and that tells me with the, um, oh, that's having to think about it. The texel density of the face is 10.6289. And so here, um, so I got that. And so now I'm gonna select all the other UV shells and then press set over here. And that'll bring all their texel density to match this. So I'll do UV shell, select everything except for the face. And then I'll press set. 
give it a sec. You can see this bar right here is thinking about it. Okay, so I can already tell that I got a little too ambitious with the, the size of the front of the head, but let's just see what happens. I'm gonna save. So this looks good. They're just all spread out right here and we need it to all fit into that zero to one. And the main thing is that this textile density now is just the same. So these squares should be about the same size as you look around the model here. And so now, sometimes this works and sometimes it doesn't, but under at the very bottom of the UV toolkit, under Arrange and Layout, I'm just gonna go down and I'm gonna press the Layout and see, it kinda does its best to fit it all into that zero to one grid, but you can see that I just, I was way too ambitious in terms of how big I was trying to make the face there. So, they didn't, they didn't quite all fit. You know, there's some overlapping stuff that happened there. So I'm just gonna select all these UV shells and I'm gonna scale it down. And then I'll try pressing the layout button again and see if it works. That time it worked, but I have a bunch of negative space this time. So I'll scale it up. Oops. Try layout again. Um. And what you might end up needing to do is just placing this by hand. The layout button is helpful and just kind of getting you started. But a lot of times I find that I need to just do this on my own here. Something else I can do is I can cut this back of the head. I can make a cut down the center of it so that I can kind of, it's okay to have, I would rather these UVs be big in this zero to one scale. Like I don't want a ton of negative space in there. Um, I want to take advantage of that resolution as best as I can. And I would rather have a seam down here and be able to make this larger than have fewer seams. So I'm going to right click and go to edge. And I'm going to create a seam right down the center of the back of the head, if I can find it. Right there. And you can see since I made selected the edge in the UV view, it did a good job of kind of selecting that edge right there. I can see it has one off. So I'm going to try that again. And you see that time I made the selection on the model, but it made it did a cut all the way through the model, which is not what I want. So sometimes it can be nice to make the selection in the UV view. Mine's a little smarter in that view in terms of the edges that it selects. So I'll select that. I'm going to try to cut it. So now I just have these two shells into different areas that hopefully will be able to get divided up a little bit better and give me some more flexibility here when laying this out. So I'm gonna select all these UV shells and I'm gonna just try laying it out again. See if the, the layout button can help me out. Okay, it's getting better. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is just manually lay this out because I think I can get this a little better than they have it. So I'm using UV shell mode a lot right here. I can under transform, if I wanna rotate something 90 degrees, I can go to transform and then under rotate, I can click these buttons right here to create rotations. So I'm gonna Lego this together a little bit. If these arrows are too big, you can press the minus button that scales them down a little bit. One thing too is the textile density on this is good to have it all be the same. But if the back of the head is not going to get rendered much, you know, you can get away with that being a little smaller. Um, it's kind of a last resort, I feel like, but you know, oops. Definitely, it's it just, it kind of depends on your model and what you plan on doing it. I mean, to do things the correct way, you definitely want the textile density to be the same all around, which is which is the case in this with this model. But what I'm doing right now is I'm laying out the model in an arrangement where if I, I feel like I have some some flexibility to scale this up a little bit more. So I'm gonna do UV shell, select all of them, scale it up a little bit more. 
and I made sure I selected all of them at the same time so their texel density stays the same. And here I'm just manually laying this thing out. UV shell is a really quick way to work here. It's really important that none of these UVs overlap each other. So keep that in mind. But you see here, I'm just trying to take advantage of the space in the zero to one grid as much as I can. Like the layout button worked at first, but there was just like half of the UV space was not getting used. And I could tell there was just a better way to do this. So um, yeah, try not to settle if the UV layout button doesn't give you something you know, great from the offset here. And remember that we can press the E button or use these rotate tools right here and rotate these. It is totally okay to rotate these as needed. It does not matter if they're like right side up or anything like that. Oh, I can see I have some overlapping UVs there that I'm gonna have to work on. Um, So this is mostly looking good. I just see I have some overlapping faces, or UVs, sorry, right here on this part of the ear. And I can see they're showing up red there. So just keep a sharp eye out for that. And so the way to fix that is hopefully the optimize button will, will work on this, but I might have to create another cut here. Um, so under unfold, I'm going to try optimize. I didn't quite do it. Um, okay, and I can kind of see why. Let me just try unfold. So unfold actually did it here, I think. I'm seeing one, you can see here, there's one little red face that's showing up in there, which is not showing up for me. I just to fix this, I'm just, can you see, I'm, I'm right clicking, going to UVs, and then I'm just dragging and selecting, and then just pressing unfold just to kind of massage this a little bit more. And I just want to make sure that I, all these UVs, none of them overlap. It's the main, it's one of the main things here. So that inner, the back of the ear should be fixed up there. I can see there might be another problem area over here. So I'm just going to select those, press unfold. Let me just see what happens if I do optimize. I pressed F to zoom in on a little bit here. So it gets a little bit hairy in here, but you can see they're all blue, which is good. And we just need to make sure that they're not overlapping. Two of the main things there. So I'm betting that's happening on the other ear. So you can see here, I'll right click and do UVs. Select those UVs that look like a problem area and I'll press F to zoom in on it here. You can see some red showing up there. So I'm gonna try, let's try and fold first. Oh, whoops, I'm looking at the top of the ear, I think. Oh no, never mind. Um, So unfolds definitely what I want there. You see, so I'm just selecting a few UVs at a time and then trying unfold or optimize just to see what I can do to iron this out. That's kind of what I'm doing is I'm ironing this 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 out here. So we can see some red on that side. Press F to zoom in on that area kind of see it from inside the ear. So here I'm going to press unfold and I might just select some UV, groups of UVs and optimize them.
And as I optimize them, that'll tend to iron it out and just get these UVs laid out a little bit more accurately. Okay, so zooming out. And this is looking, starting to look pretty good. So looking at this UV view, the main goal is, um, there's a few main goals, I should say, is you want to make sure that the UVs are laid out flat. So this looks like a checkerboard over here. You want to make sure that none of them show up as red when you press this button. This should all show up as blue right there with this button right here selected. Remember, this is the checkerboard bot button to make sure you can see the checkerboard there. Um, you want to take advantage of this zero to one space right here. So you can see here how I worked to try to take up as much of the space as possible. There's a chance I could have scaled this up a little bit more if I like moved one of these ears in here or something, but I don't know, it might have been tricky. But you can see here um, that I'm trying to take advantage of that space as best as I can. And then the final thing is you want to make sure that no UVs go past that, um, that zero to one um, edge over there. If any of these UVs are over like that, and just go over even like one pixel over that edge right there that can um, lead to problems for you so I just kind of go around make sure I'm zoomed in and I'm looking at this thing up oh, you can see right here I missed it those UVs right there go over so I'm gonna need to do the UV shell press W if it'll let me there we go sometimes it just like when you do it it just won't go right at first. So you just might have to try a couple times with the UV shell and the W button. So here you can see that's not a problem. I was able just to move this over. Make sure nothing shows up as red and that none of these UVs are overlapping. So you want to make sure that none of these UVs overlap one another. So again, if like those UVs go like that, that would be a problem right there. Okay, so now this model is totally UV'd. And so um, now I would take this head and I would bring it back into ZBrush and I would just move on to the detailed modeling process where I start to um, really get in there and model wrinkles, details, that this, you know, the finer things there. And since this is UV now, I can now paint on it. So if you want to paint on it using um, Mudbox, you can do that. And then in future tutorials, I'll also show how to paint it in ZBrush as well. So you can kind of add color to this model through either of those programs, sculpting right onto it. And before this process, you wouldn't be able to do that because it needs to be UV'd before that can happen. So um, this is now ready to export back into ZBrush. And so the best way to do that is I'll go to File and I'll save the scene. And here, I'll just go to File, Export Selection. I have the model sel selected in Objects Mode. And so I'll go to Export Selection. Oh, um, let's see, you, don't actually, you actually don't need the option box there. So just File, Export Selection, and then And I'm going to make in the scenes folder, I'm going to make a new folder. In this case, I'm going to call it 2ZBrush UV'd. And export that. And so here, I will open ZBrush again. Sometimes ZBrush won't open for me. Oh, there we go. It actually worked. Um, sometimes ZBrush won't open for me if I have been working in another program for a little while. It gets jealous or something. Um, so here, um, what I can do is I could even keep this scene here and just hide that, my original head, and then just go to Tool, Import, and then under Scenes, I'm looking for the new mo um, OBJ that I created. Okay, so if I press Shift F, oh wow. 
something happen there. Uh Let me do a new document. And then I'm going to import it. So I just I press uh, tool, import, and then dragged it on. I press edit. <clears throat> 